Today in our video, if time is precious, we're gonna show you the best things to do and see at St. James's Park. It's not one of the biggest ones in central London, but there is so much to see and do whilst you're here. So we're going to point out those things for you and some of the amazing wildlife and some which you're gonna be extremely surprised about. So stay watching till the end. To help you get around, we're gonna give you maps all over the place just to show you where we are, just to help you move around St. James's Park. Right, we're gonna start here at Duck Island on the west side of St. James's Park. The first stop on our trip around St. James's Park is this, the Swiss Chalet for a British bird keeper. As you'll see across the video, birds are well represented in St. James's Park and have been since they were introduced in 1612. The waterfowl was first introduced to St. James's Park when it was created, but unbelievably, when it was created, so were let loose two wild crocodiles. Yes, you heard me rightly, two wild crocodiles around London. Good news is, they're not here any longer. Promise. The chalet is now used as offices, but you can get into the garden as we're showing you here, and you can also get onto the veranda before the offices and look through across the lake at some of the fantastic wildlife, which you'll see very shortly. Not only have you got a great selection of flowers, but also, as you saw previously, there's a big vegetable patch as well. William III had the first Duck Island cottage built as a tea house in a grove beyond and between the miniature canals. By 1734, Duck Island was described as one of the most enchanted summer retreats imaginable, a paradise in miniature. Whilst you can get on the veranda, you can't get onto Duck Island, unfortunately. When the chalet was originally built and St. James's Park was redone, believe it or not, the king at the time put forward a governor for Duck Island. So you got governors all over the world for different parts of the British Empire, and you had a governor specifically for Duck Island, here in St. James's Park. This role stayed in place until the mid 1800s. This is the view from the veranda looking down the lake. And look at this rock just in front of the fountain. Yes, these are pelicans, a major feature of St. James's Park. And we'll tell you more about them later on in this video. But this is a surefire way to definitely see the pelicans at close range whilst at St. James's.
Here we're back in the park just by Buckingham Palace and the lake starts here and as you can see wildfowl nesting here in the middle of the lake. Just to give you an idea of how tame these birds are, this heron is right by the edge of the path. And here, yes, geese walking around waiting for food. And look at this squirrel as it comes out and sees an opportunity for more food. If you go nowhere else, this is a massive photo opportunity. The Blue Bridge across the lake, right in the middle of the park. And we'll cover it a bit more later. When it's a beautiful day, there is nothing like sitting in the park, having a picnic and watching the world go by. Great for you and your families. This is a busier part of it over by Marlborough Gate. Stay watching, we've got a fantastic place we've discovered that not many people go to. St James's Park is one of the most popular parks in London and with the pelicans on show, it's not hard to understand why. The pelicans were first introduced to the park in 1664 as a gift from the then Russian ambassador and over 40 pelicans have since made the park their home. Pelicans are extremely outgoing and sociable. One rather mischievous pelican used to fly over to London Zoo in the Regent's Park to steal fish for lunch and then would fly back. Often you'll find them sitting on park benches next to visitors. As you can see, the pelicans are free to roam around and sometimes you'll find them on the paths, not worrying about pedestrians or anyone else walking by and just doing their own thing. It's not till you get this close that you realise how large each of these birds are. They're fed each day at about 2.30 by the park keepers, but one thing we must say is please do not feed any of the wildlife in the park, because if you do feed them the wrong things, it could have disastrous consequences. St James's Park has something for everyone, and now we want to share with you some of the beautiful flowers and also some of the trees that have been planted over the many, many years here. When Charles II was in exile in France under the Commonwealth of England, he was impressed by the elaborate gardens at the French royal palaces and on his accession he had the park redesigned to a more formal style by a French landscaper which is where the flowers, trees and shrubs that you now see got their original influence from. And just for confirmation, the traffic cones had no French influence whatsoever. The great thing about this is you can just stroll through the park and see these flowers when you're moving from one place to another, so everyone stays happy within the family. The building on the right is a large cafe, so you can have something to aim for to keep everyone happy. It's another one of those places you can just stand back, look at things around you and think, wow, the influence from years gone by. Along the water's edge, you'll find lots of these guides to the different birds that you'll find in St James's Park. And then you'll find the birds never that far away from them.
tip from us, if you're coming to St. James's Park and really want to take in the wildlife, if you do it earlier in the day, definitely before 12 noon, you've got a greater chance of seeing the birds when you haven't got all the people walking too close to them to frighten them away. And it's also a good chance for some of the natives to have a kip. Again, as we mentioned earlier, although it may be tempting, please don't feed the birds. One thing you'll definitely want to do is keep your eyes open because you never know where you're going to see wildlife. This heron took us by surprise, just preening by the side of the water. And stay watching, because we've got more from this little bird, which is extremely friendly. I'm currently standing on the Blue Bridge in the middle of St. James's Park, and the bridge was built across the lake to give fantastic views over both Horse Guards Parade, which had the old palace in there, and also the brand new palace, which you can see just behind me there, which is Buckingham Palace. The Blue Bridge, if you don't do anything else when you come to St. James's Park, is one you've got to get on. And quite often you can get a nice space by the railings to see some of the amazing views. I love St. James's Park. It has to be my favorite London park because it has so much to do and see within a smaller space. Because if you go to many of the other parks, they're massive. So you've seen the view in the other direction towards Buckingham Palace. Here, we look at the penguins and move out and see in the other direction, Horse Guards Parade. But above Westminster and the Westminster buildings, you'll also see the London Eye. Now we continue our journey across St. James's Park and here we've gone across the Blue Bridge and now we're on the south side of the park and we look at Birdcage Walk. This is Birdcage Walk which runs from the Parliament Square right down through to Buckingham Palace. Now it was called Birdcage Walk because after King Henry VIII drained the marshes to make this into St. James's Park, King Charles II, eight years later, actually built an aviary down here on the south side of Birdcage Walk, which contained all sorts of birds, which you've already seen within St. James's Park. And just over here is Wellington Barracks, where the guards are for the changing of the guards. And we have a video on that. You've seen that already. I know how much has been enjoyed. But I'll also place a link up here, just in case you haven't seen that one already. But we go behind the scenes at Wellington Barracks, or on Birdcage Walk. Now we're going to show you one of our favourite places to go, sit and have a picnic. And also, unlike the earlier video we showed you, it's never crowded. For some unknown reason, people tend to stick to the north of the lake. And that's where lots of the birds are. And also you can access the Blue Bridge after leaving Buckingham Palace. But we find if you go round to the south of the lake and walk through here, you still get spectacular views find the Blue Bridge and you almost have the place to yourself. St James's Park is one of the oldest royal parks in London and surrounded by three palaces. So we've seen Buckingham Palace already. We've also seen Horse Guards Parade, which of course was St James's Palace. And the other palace goes round it is Westminster, which is now known as the Houses of Parliament. Keep those eyes peeled. You never know when you're going to find that heron. Here on the north side of the Blue Bridge is a fantastic place to find some wildlife. We showed you these green birds earlier. They can be seen here at St James's Park and across many of the parks in London, especially at Kensington Gardens. These green birds are parakeets, and they come with different species, which are the red-necked parakeets, and also sometimes you find rose-winged parakeets as well. As you can see, 
they're extremely friendly. Not only are they friendly with humans, but they're also friendly with all of the animal, other animals here within the park as well. A word of warning, they are on the lookout for food. So if they spot what they think is a food opportunity, they flock to it. So just be careful if you have young children, as it could be a surprise and a bit scary. For our final look around parts of St. James's Park, we're now going to take you to the world famous Mall, which runs from Admiralty Arch and Trafalgar Square all the way up to Buckingham Palace and is a different colour. Here we're going to give you a 360 degree view from Marlborough Gate. Worldly recognisable because this road is a different colour to so many others. Here you can see Buckingham Palace. Now we're going to give you a photo opportunity but please be careful of the traffic. This is taken in the traffic aisle just outside Barbara Gate and what a view of Buckingham Palace and the Queen Victoria Memorial. Again, if you visit this park early, it's amazing the lack of traffic. Off the mall, you have many different royal residences, including Clarence House. We're now turning to view towards Trafalgar Square, and off at the end here is Admiralty Arch. The arch was originally commissioned by Edward VII in memory of his mother, Queen Victoria. It's a Grade One listed building. In the past, it was a residence of the first Sea Lord and was used by the Admiralty. Now it's being developed into a luxury hotel and apartments. Here, we're just inside Marlborough Gate, just inside the park. And I wanted to show you this because it's a fantastic place to come and grab a cup of coffee and also a snack and a bite to eat, all by Marlborough Gate. Another great aspect of St. James's Park is not just the beautifully kept lawns and also flower beds, but sometimes they just let the flowers grow wild as well. Right, I'm off for a cup of coffee. I'm gonna leave you with a playlist of some great outdoor places to see whilst you're in London, and I'll see you in those videos in just a second.